In some of the earlier videos in this series, we compared CGI to gray iron. And what I'd like to do in this video is to extend that to alloyed gray iron. So by alloying, we mean adding elements like chrome or copper or nickel or molybdenum and manganese, either individually or in combination, to increase the strength of the gray iron. And typically, those additions will increase the strength by about 20%. And that may be enough for the current performance and durability demands of the engine, but CGI would offer at least 75% higher tensile strength, and that would bring more opportunities for engine design and performance benefits. So let's look at it in more detail. And um, the first thing to look at is the thermal conductivity. And here in this plot, we see the thermal conductivity of conventional gray cast iron and CGI with 3% nodularity as a function of temperature. And we see at the end, at flame deck temperatures of approximately 400 degrees C, the CGI gives away about 20% thermal conductivity. But when we add alloying elements to gray cast iron, we restrict the electron mobility and reduce the thermal conductivity. So the thermal conductivity of alloyed gray iron is quite similar to CGI, and at flame deck temperatures, only about 5% difference. We can explain this reduction in thermal conductivity from gray iron to alloyed gray iron, and here in the overhead, we see a comparison for iron and steel. When we add 1% of an alloying element, how much will the thermal conductivity decrease? So, for example, adding 1% of copper will reduce the thermal conductivity by 5%. Um, molybdenum, 1%, will reduce by 10%. And really, chrome is the big hitter. When we add 1% of chrome, we reduce the thermal conductivity by 30%. Now, typically for a cylinder head material in alloyed gray cast iron, the additions will be 0.3% moly and 0.3% chrome. And if we assume that this is linear, 1%, or sorry, 0.3% of molybdenum will reduce the thermal conductivity by about 3%. Uh, 0.3% addition of chrome will reduce the thermal conductivity by 10%. And that 13% fully accounts for the reduced thermal conductivity between normal gray iron and alloyed gray iron. Um, if we look at the next thing, it's castability. And what we do with alloyed gray iron to make it stronger, we tend to reduce the carbon content. If you'll remember from the second video in our series, we showed that these flakes in gray cast iron bring a lot of good things in terms of thermal conductivity and vibration damping. But also we said that when the carbon atoms come together to form graphite particles, there's a 9% volume expansion. And we rely on that volume expansion to offset the natural shrinkage of the iron. Now, unfortunately, the graphite particles also make the gray iron relatively weak and brittle because they're stress concentration sites and they're opportunities for crack initiation and crack propagation. So the first thing to do when making gray iron stronger is to reduce the carbon content with reduced carbon content, we have less flakes, so less crack initiation opportunities, but also less graphite expansion to offset the shrinkage of the iron. So this shows a small summary of potential chemistry for an alloyed gray cast iron. We have lower carbon content, and we have 0.3% chrome, as I said earlier, 0.3% molybdenum, and perhaps 0.2% uh, of nickel. So, the lower carbon content, it makes shrinkage more likely. And also these alloying elements, the chrome and the nickel and the molybdenum, they segregate to the last areas of the casting to solidify. And in those areas, we don't have any graphite expansion, so we have the risk of microporosity. And in the end, with CGI having a higher carbon content and less of these alloys to segregate to the last solidifying areas, uh, we have a quite good castability and quite good shrinkage resistance. And in the end, the porosity formation of alloyed gray iron and CGI is effectively the same. The next thing to look at in our comparison of CGI and alloyed gray cast iron is machinability. And here we see a plot from the University of Darmstadt in Germany, 
where they compared the tool life of gray iron in the red bars, this is conventional gray iron, to CGI in the blue bars. And we can see here for high-speed machining with cubic boron nitride inserts at 800 meters per minute, the tool life of CGI is, is 20 times less. So CGI is not compatible with high-speed CBN machining. But in the yellow bar, we see that the alloyed gray iron is also not compatible. The solution for CGI has been to go to carbide tooling to cut at conventional feeds and speeds, perhaps 150 meters per minute. And here we see that the difference in the red bar for the gray iron, conventional gray iron, and the blue bar for CGI is more in line with the difference in the properties. Yeah? And now we see the yellow bar. It's effectively the same as the CGI bar. We're not trying to set, suggest here that the machinability of CGI is better than alloyed gray cast iron. We're trying to say that it's not different. Yes? And we have some examples to show that. So for each of the different operations, as we step through the machining of a cylinder head or a cylinder block, this is an example from Sandvik, where they're comparing a cylinder head in alloyed gray cast iron to conventional CGI. This is the rough milling operation, so the depth of cut is three millimeters. And you see in the end their conclusion, same to a life with less wear on the CGI insert. So that's rough milling. Now we look at finish milling, so the depth of cut is only 0.5 millimeter. And again, same to a life, both of the inserts made 1,000 passes. Uh, moving forward, we now look at drilling. This is a six millimeter uh, diameter drill hole. Um, again, comparing alloyed gray cast iron to CGI, they conclude same to a life. Um, moving to the next operation, this is now an oil gallery and a cylinder block. It's a long drill, 19 millimeter diameter, length 13 times the diameter. And in the end, they conclude again, same to a life, 20 meters of cutting length for both materials. Um, in this one, we move from Sandvik to Ingersoll. So this is an example from Ingersoll on a cylinder block, again, comparing CGI with alloyed gray cast iron. And you can see in the bottom, they're comparing uh, CGI to gray iron with uh, 260 megapascal tensile strength, increased because of the chrome alloy addition. And here for the uh, chromium alloyed gray iron, they have 1,600 passes, 17.6 meters per cutting edge, and in CGI, 19 meters per cutting edge. So again, the machinability of alloyed gray iron and CGI is effectively the same, and frequently CGI will be better. CGI can be better because it's a more narrowly defined material, and it allows the machining guys to set up their operation and optimize the operation. Frequently, the machining people will say, we don't, care, we don't care what you give us, just give us the same thing every day. And that's what CGI does. Um, so we've now looked at thermal conductivity, castability, and machinability. When we add alloying elements, we of course increase the cost because we have to pay for those alloying elements. And NVH, as we saw in our engine design benefits over uh, presentation, video three in our series, and because of the higher stiffness of CGI, we have better uh, vibration damping and less noise generation. Um, alloyed gray iron, the stiffness only increases by about 10%, whereas in CGI, the stiffness increases by 50%. So we have a much higher NVH benefit for the CGI. And as I said at the beginning of our presentation, the increase in strength of about 20% for alloyed gray cast iron it might be enough for the current performance and durability requirements of the engine, but it doesn't really offer any upgrade potential. So when we summarize, um, when we move from conventional gray cast iron to alloyed gray cast iron, we have a 20% increase in tensile strength, a 10% increase in stiffness, uh, only a 20% increase in fatigue strength. Yeah. But if we change from gray iron to CGI, we have at least 75% increase in tensile strength, 50% increase in uh, stiffness, and more than double of the fatigue strength. 
and the thermal conductivity is more or less the same. So the real question here is that if you're willing to take the challenges of thermal conductivity, of castability, and of machinability, why not take all of the advantages of CGI and also have more upgrade potential for the future in terms of weight reduction and engine design benefits and engine performance benefits. In the year 2000, and perhaps in 2005, the heavy-duty guys, they had to use alloyed gray cast iron. CGI wasn't quite fully proven. Um, but today, with foundry solutions, with machining solutions, and with millions of CGI engines on the road, it's not a good trade-off anymore. Um, if you have to make this decision moving from gray iron up, it's much better to go all the way to CGI and get all of the benefits. So, um, we have a lot more information about this and about a lot of other things as well. And if you want any more information about CGI, contact Cintercast.